quite well. Seraphine very immobile, very easy to land the rocket jump onto her, or even get the reset. So, um, for OMG, I'm looking at mid lane priority into jungle skirmishes, especially on the bottom side for them. But LGD, they might prefer a more standard fight with their big AoE CC. And that's what it seems to be like going into this third and final game that LGD are indexing so heavily into being able to have more of that mid to late game team fight, even if it doesn't seem like it on paper. They're a team that is not going to be easy to burst down. They're a team that can peel back, reset a fight easily. So that puts a lot of the onus onto OMG to try to see if they can burst them out in the early game and win mid. Yeah, it's going to be very crucial for OMG. They have one of the best chase down compositions. Um, that you can draft in League of Legends. Kai'Sa with Supercharge, you can close up on targets really easily, and you also have that Tristana with the reset. So if they get into a skirmish, they get the first kill, it's super easy for them to clean up, and I do expect them to go very heavily for the blue side uh, red buff fight. That's typically where you will see this composition just uh, win out in most situations. However, uh, talking about their lanes a little bit, their, their bottom lane should be pushed in just a little bit because of the Felios matchup and their top side should also be uh, should also be in a deficit. So really what you're expecting out of OMG is for Uning and this mid lane Tristana to get the prior role. As we load up onto the rift, game three, LGD trying to keep the playoff dream alive while OMG would love to shatter that with an upset here. It's really funny, we have talked about the implications. If LGD lose today, they actually still have a pathway to get into playoffs, but they have to 2-0 RNG, IG, and JD game. Which, let me just tell you here, is not happening. <laughs> you don't believe in miracles? I believe in miracles. I'm not sure I believe in LGD. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? We'll, sa we'll have to go back to this conversation after this series. If OMG win, pretty much that dream is dead i mean outside of a miracle i don't know how well it's going like there's not even just a miracle you're gonna need like six miracles if they lose to omg which is why omg looking for a late invade again like they did in game one but lgd are oh, reading no. this play far better than last time cold doesn't even have the ability to flash away just yet they got the exhaust on ooming but it's quay who dies to first blood omg trying to see if they can continue the fight going with cold in the back line still getting kited away chance chased down so low finally aki takes him down that's two kills the flash comes in from uniboy to stay alive but omg the late invade it works Five summoners and two kills garnered for OMG. That was even a five-man beat drop. I, I didn't expect OMG to be that powerful in the level one. Great play from them. They overpower through the thresh hook. They get away from the crowd control onto Uniboy, and they still find the win. That was immaculate target selection for them to be able to pull that off. And with the summoner disadvantage in the bottom side right there, there's only the flash left on Kramer, OMG should be able to execute their strategy of continuing to invade on the bottom side. Well, the crazy thing to me is, while we do have a bit of a skirmish in the bot lane, the fact that the implications of that invade, what has happened since then? Look mid lane, look bot lane. OMG now have lane priority against LGD. While bot lane, you'd expect it. Mid lane, we were kind of up in the air on what it was going to ha what was going to happen between those two. And Ooming has a lot more potential to rotate around with Aki now. Yeah, this is absolutely ridiculous, honestly. Uh, if you look at that rub buff, it's still untaken, and OMG could very well send people to to guard that. At the very least, they will always have timers on Quay's Raptors and Quay's Red. So that just means it's very easy to time those uh, invades and get in at the opportune moment while Quay and Yuri Boy and the bot lane are not going to have their summoners. No, it's going to be difficult for LGD and a nice ward from Ooming to again be able to pinpoint Quay since they have that time read. You were just saying that they know where Quay should be at all times. Yeah, it's very hard to disengage from an enemy team that knows when you're going to show up. So what this means is uh, Quay has a very unendable task. Either he wants to give Ouch. up his buffs or if he wants to, uh, essentially if he wants to still take his red buff and Raptors in peace, he will need to find a gank in lane first. Really, it's not looking like there's gonna be an easy opportunity to do so. Well, nope. sure, you can get a lantern bot lane to be able to have a little help. Look mid lane, look at how little mana Uniboy has. 
Quay again tries to get Raptors and walks right into Aki and Uming, who are saying, nah, 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 this is ours. Yeah, there's no way that they don't just chow down on that Raptor camp. They have the timers too tight. They're constantly going to be warding this. And what Quay should try to do probably at this point is play towards the top side. The top side for them is still a winning matchup. And uh, OMG haven't really headed towards that side of the map. So at least he's going to be able to split the scuttles and force Nu into a rather uncomfortable position. If Nu takes another trade here, there's actually a bit of a chance he gets Tower Dove. Looking bot lane, Aki might be looking for the dive in the air instead of looking for Uniboy. Trying to instead get a little bit of a lead for Eric and Cold. Continuing that two kills that they've already been able to gift over uh, to Eric this they ADC. They could be focusing on Chance. Yeah, they definitely are focusing on Chance, even though they got a lot of damage onto Kramer already. It's going to be Eric who picks up the kill, but it's a trade of ADC for support. Unless Chance dies, Glenn's away from Eric. Colt was too late to the party to be able to help out. Now he's locked underneath the turret. Uniboy on the other side, hoping to be able to help out the top laner survive. He will be able to do so with two dead on their team. Really risky play coming from OMG, but they know they have the execution down. I thought they were going to go for Chance since he had no flash up, but they went for Kramer with the flash. We're able to crowd control him from start to finish, not allow him to pull it off. Now in the meantime, LGD trying to get something back in the top side. Looks like a lot of damage on Anu, no flash though. He was able to easily run him down, getting a little bit of gold back for the team. Yeah, a bit of a greedy back, just trying to get the recall off in the lane itself. Um, didn't expect the jungler to show up there. And uh, LG are going to be able to trade one back. But taking a look at Eric items right now, that is a oh, scary Kaisa. That is <laughs> that is definitely bad for your health. It means that he's going to get evolved Q on the next back 100%. And taking a look at his items, he is a full noon quiver ahead of Kramer. That's insane. We are only six minutes into the game and we already have a 3-0 Kaisa on OMG's side. Unless they can shut down Eric soon, this gravy train can be rolling out of the station that's too quick for LGD to stop. This is going to be a level 6 bot where they just instantly kill Kramer over Chance. Like, they have the damage there, and we actually have seen Cold execute this quite well. You use the explosive cask, which Flay and Death's Ends cannot stop. You hit one person back, and then you just delete them with the body slam afterwards. Honestly, that does seem like it's a good option, even though Dragon's up. Naki wants to get that first before maybe rotating down to the bot lane. Since, again, we look back to Quay and where he's at, what he's able to do, which isn't really much. Sure, he was able to get the kill topside, but they already knew that he'd be topside. Now that Raptors and Red Buff are starting to spawn back up on the bottom half of the map, that means you know Quay is going to be down there, so you can play it a little bit safer and keep running him around the map. I like this idea from Quay. As we talked about, if he wants his own Raptors, if he wants his own red buff, he actually needs to gank bottom lane first. Make sure he has the numbers advantage. He has the Onslaught of Shadows waiting. And uh, I think his best chance here is for Cold to go over aggressive. Cold does have the level lead. So there is a chance they could just all in them, uh, especially onto Chance because he doesn't have that exhaust up just yet. But that was a smart Flash play from Cold. Play. Getting a lot of damage onto Cold, knocked him back as well with the charge. He's still alive for a long time, but eventually will die to Kramer. Good play, good play from there. Um, I thought Cold would be able to get out, but it was an even better play from Chance. Is able to deny the body slam from escaping there. And congratulations to Quay, you may marry your Raptors now. <laughs> no, it doesn't seem like he wants to. Instead was hoping that Eric was overextending. But he was smart enough to read that play, saying, yeah, there's no real reason for me to be here until he noticed them on that shrine on the bottom half of the map. Like, okay, now I can go out. Now Quay can rotate back to get his Raptors. Oh, that must be so, so nice for the Hecarim. It's eight minutes into the game, and he finally sees what the Raptors look like. He gets a taste of chicken now. But he is going to be giving over the Herald on the top side of the map. Uh, this time around, OMG actually uh, not rotating the air to carry is what I want to see. Um, and just doing it with the three men. It will be a smite Ooh. fight, though. Could be a smite fight. Here's the Onslaught of Shadows with an Ignite in the back line. Encore Ooh. connecting onto two members. Flash away from Aki, but it's going to be the... Wait, Did it's stolen away it? by Uniboy. He was what? able to get it, and so that means LGD get the eye. Uh, Kramer, Kramer is in a very interesting position. We are going to disregard that, but... Let's go uh, back. Let's unexpected. go back to the Rift Herald. 
<laughs> yeah. Um, OMG were there first. They had the perfect uh, zone out on the ramp. But somehow the smite doesn't come through. And I'm not even sure how Seraphine got that one. It seemed to be just the beat drop allowing them to steal that objective. That's absolutely huge. And even Quay is able to pick that one up. I would like to see the replay on that one, just because I want to see how Uniboy steals that. If it is the beat drop, or if it's maybe even just the passive that was able to get it. So when we look at this, I'm going to keep my eyes on it. Yeah, so it was a pretty decent attempt right here, and it was actually the yeah, high note that gets it going down. Aki just didn't smite properly. He actually just didn't burn the cooldown. Uniboy able to pick that one up, and that's a pretty big swing of tempo. I, I think what most likely you are going to see is top lane getting to get pushed in even harder. We have talked about LGD's win condition, and it's late game and 4-1 split push. If they can get the 4-1 split push to work, it gives them more opportunities to play towards the top side and just disregard what they're losing in Raptors and Red completely. I just find it wild that Uniboy was able to steal it. That, that's <laughs> the thing to me. It's, yeah. It was so close. When we take a look at this replay, I honestly you can see in the on the corner there. It was a nice flank by Cold just to make sure there's no escape for Crane. This is a pretty nice mind game. Usually when OMG has gone for Herald, they have gone for four man and Cold going oh, in on the same time. Flash play is here. Slam, explosive cost, but look at Aki trying to see if they can show up with a little thing lullaby onto the Hecarim. Not enough damage on a chance just yet, nor Kramer. So they're gonna be able to kite back. LGD maintain themselves. I just find this so hilarious that every time Raptors is up for Quay, he actually has to go to his bot lane first. He doesn't have another play. He's like, before I can chat down on Raptors, I need to go to this bot lane. And uh, it's still going to be a win for uh, OMG. Chats is going very, very low here. Uh, I'm just looking at the killer instincts. Not up. So no killer instinct for Eric to be able to dive in. Quay's there as well. So it could have been a bit risky for OMG to go for this play, but... Let's be honest, when, when would that stop them? Yeah, it really hasn't been able to, to stop them. And once more, Quay's Raptors are going to be taken away. He's actually standing in vision right now. So uh, Colt has spotted him on the sweeper. He's not going to go in for this one. He's keeping his distance. Well played by That's OMG. He lost. he lost the chickens again. Oh, it yeah. happened once more. He's rarely ever going to be able to get that. Even if he shows a bot lane, I feel like it's just so much put in by Aki and Uming to take that away from him. That even it's like, oh, you know what? I've been hanging around bot side to try to help him out. Unless the gank is extremely successful, he can't even go and enjoy a nice chicken dinner. Uh, 11 minutes, one Raptor. Let's go, boys. It's just the life of a jungler when you're losing from the bot lane. <laughs> and even there, it seemed like OMG wanted to be able to get a pick on a Kramer, but he had flash, he had heal. That would have been a bit much had they actually been able to make that work. But they were more trying to see if they could force him out since the dragon is up. Quay and Uniboy are tag teaming. This is what we'd expect from the Seraphine and Hecarim. For them to be able to work together to try to control a zone. But unfortunately with the Encore missing like that, they have to fall back. That was a weird Encore because there was no one to follow up even if that landed. Uh, not really sure what that was about. Maybe it was a tempo Encore. Try and get something out of the bot lane. My only explanation so far, but LGD are going to play the fork and head towards the dragon pit. New does not have a TP here, so he has to show up. Oh, he's already here, by the way, so it doesn't yeah, actually matter. No, so, you're right, you're right. Uh, but it still looks like they're not able to actually wrestle that, so it's just going to be a bit of gold onto Kramer to help him get to that three item spike a little sooner. It's going to be nice, at least, you know. This is usually the typical LGD we'd expect them trying to scale up. Unfortunately, it is still going into a team that has a pretty decent mid game. We have a 4-0 Kai'Sa in your way. Your jungler's rarely been able to get the chickens. They have no control of the dragon pet either because the bot lane tempo is so favoring to OMG that LGD, they're the ones that just need to stop the bleeding. They need to delay the game as long as possible so they can keep scaling up. Good thing for LGD is they actually have some decent two item spikes. Usually Seraphine with the uh, Moonstaff build and uh, Kramer just coming into his uh, to, to his uh, uh, Hurricane is able to battle quite well. So they're not as tied to a three item build as I think OMG previously were. Um, it does mean that they have to fight just because the timers are so early on in OMG's favor. but. You know, if they get to two items, they could definitely still stop a soul from coming down. 
most likely it will be uh, in eight minutes time where they have to contest whether they like to or not. That should just be the point we're looking at. And before that, LGD are just playing for picks, especially on this bottom side with the uh, turbo chem tank done on Hecarim. And look where he's at as well. His Raptors are up, so, you know, going bot lane first. Here's the drill. Can... Let's go. <laughs> Get a little bit extra there. Unfortunately, it does seem that OMG are reading this play. They're like, oh, Raptors are up. He's probably bot lane. Let's bail. Yep. Really good vision coming in from Cole. Just warding that one out. They have entire river under control. Aki is on not on this side of the jungle, but it looks like OMG are looking for the play already. Ooh. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Look at that. He was able to swerve and dive, getting the flash too. Nice attempt there by New to be able to get people. I almost thought that he was going to find the majority of LGD since Uniboy had dodged him already. Yeah, good flash away by chance as well. He was a dead man if he didn't blow that one. And now LGD actually have a, weirdly enough, a bit of a reprieve as OMG cannot go back into this mid lane fast enough. They should get this uh, shove. And plus they're going straight for the Herald. A new probably isn't able to join this one. He'd be a little bit too late. So LGD up that play actually get an objective a yeah, decisive call could be still in a way like they were somehow able to steal before all <laughs> the smite comes in from play to make sure the swirl seed doesn't get it so that's why i'm like i'm holding on saying they got it for sure because i didn't know if a steal might happen we have seen crazier things happen in the lpl i would not put it behind that for dream dust to just steal an objective so uh... <laughs> could have happened I mean, we saw somehow a seraphine steal one earlier so that's why i'm like you know I'm reserving judgment until I see it dead. <laughs> it's always the correct play to go for. Uh, OMG actually get a big chunk of gold out of that one. Uh, they're able to clear topside. They get the bottom lane tower. And uh, we have been seeing new actually outrate cult. It's very interesting to see that one happen. But with the two assists he had, uh, he's actually had a very good time against cult. Able to push him out in lane despite the kill. And I want to see if that continues to be the case. Usually Aatrox is considered the counter matchup. Uh, you can win this fight handedly and just take the power against someone like a Scion. But, you know, that hasn't really happened. We'll see if Cult can do better. For now, we're also waiting to see if Quay's got a little bit more control of his own jungle. Now that there's not really a bot lane anymore that you have to worry about since that tier 1 turret was taken by Nude not too long ago. Does mean that possible different angles maybe having to visit top lane instead to be able to get your own cromp as cold already maintaining complete control around this even kramer chance bailing completely realizing that this fat man's in their jungle and he could easily go for an engage if you're not too careful i love how patient cold is he takes 300 damage just waiting over the wall for the explosive cast while he decides to run away here and it looks like we still have cult with the advantage in this lane um, he is going to get that one tower coming down. And I, I do want to see LGD actually trying to index into the 5v5s now. I feel like they have really good presence when it comes to sieges. Because everyone is trying to defend in a narrow corridor. And that just lines up with the Encore very, very well. Uh, we do see the Herald being taken away, however. And this is OMG now. Uh, I'm sorry, LGD now with very good vision objective. They have the mid lane shove. And Drake is coming up in 30 seconds. We see the pings coming down. Oh, they're not actually going to hold on to their territory. Okay. Oh. I, I thought they were going to try and okay. fight that one a little bit forcefully. Same here. Uh, yeah, they are going to do it. They are going to actually come on to the objectives. And this is where we see the wombo combo can actually shine. If they can find that wombo combo onto Eric, they could actually just wipe him instantly. But that's the thing, is they have to be able to get it to land. With the Gale Force, makes it a little bit more difficult. But if you keep stepping a bit too far forward without any protection from cold, protection from new, could be easy target. That's why you see him already backing off in LGD. Trying to press up their advantage a bit. They have a TP possibility out of cult if they need to. Yeah, the positioning for them is too disadvantageous at this point. I, I would actually prefer LGD to just go for uh -oh. the top lane, but they are going in. Too late. Look at Cold in the back line. He disrupts them completely. Kramer's gone. Next going to be Chance as they got two kills right away. Trying to see if they can disengage. LGD want to be able to get away, but he already got the killer instinct coming in from Eric. A lot of damage on a Colt. Flashing Ooh. away, but he flashes right back in on top of him. Has an explosive charge. Get Wants to at least be able to get one with him. He's still alive. How is he doing it? Trying to be able to escape with the shields coming in. They might be able to gallop back in. A little bit of damage on to New. The blast cone is there, but they're going to trade the life of Quay so Colt can survive.
Moonstaff, OP, the amount of healing onto World Ender and uh, just doubling up on the effect of the HP he's getting. Plus there's very little Grievous Wounds on the opponent team, means that Colt is actually able to claw himself back into that team fight. I will say, overall, it wasn't a great fight for uh, LGD. I feel like you go early or you don't go at all. The positioning was honestly just super awkward. Cold gets a great find onto this one. And initially, it just looks like OMG are going to wipe the floor with LGD. But Colt somehow stands his ground, goes into the back line, and gets some great healing onto Eric to actually claw this one back fairly close. Honestly, that was insane from this Atronx, where, yeah, sure, you, you could say that they need Grievous Wounds on the side of OMG to be able to stop that from ever happening again. They should have already had that. It's hard to be able to read that kind of play when you're not quite at that position to be able to afford those secondary items. You're still trying to get towards that first legendary item before you really want to spend a little bit of your extra capital to be able to just stop an Atrox who hasn't been a part of the game for a while. Yeah, it's, it's really spectacular to see LGD actually able to claw themselves back into that fight. That wasn't actually a bad fight for them in the end. I feel like the setup was terrible. <laughs> they lose their carries Agreed. almost instantly. <laughs> and I, I really didn't understand why they were going for that player the way that they uh, sequenced it. But it, it, it worked, and now they have that ultimate like we're talking about. If, LG, if OMG get too close and have a lot of members actually caught up in the crowd control, LGD actually have a very good AoE Wombo combo. They could have people walking in, bunching up, and taking them directly in to a Darkened Blade. If you get that Q3 on the ultimates right there, you're going to see a play that is akin to the Shy when he went to Worlds. But I wonder if they're going to try to put a little bit more force on a cult, force him away from the fight. Last time, they were able to blow up Kramer, but if you can take out Cult or Uniboy, that could be huge. It does seem that LGD want a fight. They want to be able to pick off somebody of OMG, but with those front lines, it makes it really difficult. It's a really good uh, force coming in from LGD. They get the explosive cask, so that means one of the OMG's best ways of stealing the Baron is actually off the table right now. Aki also doesn't have the flash. So he has to rely on the blast cone to actually get over the wall and LGD could turn in that narrow corridor where everyone is bunched up. Yeah, but they're a bit afraid on that one. Backing off to make sure that they're not getting themselves caught. While LGD might have great zone control themselves, it is also worth noting that OMG, even without the explosive cast, it can be difficult to be able to fight them when you're the ones who have to peel back first. Yeah, I, I felt like they could actually have gone for that play if they took away the Blast Cone. Without the Blast Cone, then Aki has no way of actually getting in the pit, and that's actually somewhat of a reasonable play, to force the enemy to either split up or walk through a narrow ramp. They do have the Moon Staff, so they can actually heal themselves quite well. <laughs> it, it, it's not a, a terrible start from them, but they don't get the Blast Cone, and they decide to pull off in the end and just fight for another day. Yeah, but I'm also looking over on the other side where... Moonstaff is already completed for Univoice, so a Seraphine full build kind of thing. But you have the Oblivion Orb from Aki. You already have the Thornmail coming in from Nu, trying to set up in these side lanes to be able to deny Cult from really split pushing and being a nuisance that they have to deal with. It makes it so that Nu can always walk nearby him and not really ever take that much damage. This is going to be the critical team fight, and like you mentioned, Cult might not be doing the same amount of damage and not healing as much as the previous one. Uh, interesting play from LGD. They're actually trying to full push and force uh, OMG to go back and defend their second tower. Um, and if, if I'm OMG, I actually don't really care. Like, <laughs> I might send one person back, but I, I still would try to hold position over here. I feel like if, uh, the thing about LGD's composition is they don't actually have great backline access. So if OMG held their ground and just stood in position, I don't think there was much that LGD could do, but they actually give up on a lot of spacing here, which I'm a little bit surprised about. Seems like they're a little worried. That's why they keep backing off of this one. They're worried that Colt might be able to get into the back line somehow, or they're not going to be able to do much against Uniboy if a nice Encore comes out. So they want to set up a flank potential out of Colt 
to be able to actually get in here. He pops the battle song, but not getting in the pit in time. So it's a dragon secured now into the back line with the little thing lullaby as well. That's a but four, keep man. in mind that Colts have been wreaking havoc in the back line. Ooming trying to be able to get away, getting a lot of damage back onto LGD, who are still locked inside of this pit. Eric is on the other side of the wall to be able to help get the kill on oh, Uniboy with LGD still there, but Colt might be able to wrestle back some control back for the fight with Eric still kiting back, not going to be able to get what they need. And OMG, oh, even though they do lose out on Ooming, they stay down and get an ace over LGD. That was absolutely massive for him, Colt. To be able to snipe off that kill, it's going to delay the Baron, and it really means that uh, LGD get to fight another day. Most crucially, Dragon Soul isn't done, uh, isn't completely over for them, and that was a fight where I felt like it could have gone both ways, but uh, ultimately LGD, like as we were mentioning, they don't have great backline access, and they weren't able to follow up off the four-man Seraphine ultimate. So the Encore lands on a lot of crucial members, but Kramer and uh, Quay aren't able to find the damage to actually follow up there. It, it was really risky from OMG, but at the end of the day, uh, it does pan out for them. So we're going to watch this again. Great engage coming out from Cold. Even better Seraphine ultimate. And this is the critical play here. Eric able to get in amongst the trees, flashing out on time, and keeping both of these AD carries out of the pit, still alive and dishing out damage. That was a really good play from Eric. Just threading the needle onto that play, not getting caught into the pit, and it means that uh, both of the damage dealers, actually only one of the damage dealers from OMG, is able to survive. It's honestly really nice to see coming in from OMG these kind of split fights that they need to take. This is a composition that wants to be able to split up and pick apart LGD, because if they ever fight into an LGD type fight, they're going to lose. They don't have the best front to back, right? It's far better for LGD oh, to be able to get that front to back, especially if they're able to get a pick onto someone. But they have no damage onto New. The only one who really is dealing damage is Kramer, and if he ever gets picked off, that's going to be brutal for them. Look, New's still taking it up, and he doesn't care. They get no damage whatsoever in this one. OMG are going to hard push down this wave, and we have to be very careful about the ultimates right here. The, the real question is, what is the sustained damage going to be? It, it seems like Kramer is still two items away from being to be uh, able to effectively take down Mew. He still needs his Infinity Edge, and he still needs his Lord Dominic's Regard. So that's two items away from Kramer being able to dish out sustained damage. And if you look at LGD comp, this is a pure AD comp. They, they're not actually getting much damage out of Uni Boy whatsoever. Mew is doing the right thing by just stacking armor as high as possible. Oh, looks like Colt got himself picked off, even with the Sterics and Bricks. He has a lot of damage back on Ooming, but no shield Ooh. today, so he dies, even with Quay on the other side wanting to be able to get back in. They lose the top laner. Oh, I, I feel like Kramer might actually be forced to take uh, Lord Dominic second, rather than just going for the straight up, uh, straight up Infinity Edge. It's... I think so, too. Yeah, it's kind of a sad time to, to be in that position. Uh, looks like he's still going for IE, but what that means is he pretty much needs a flash, and he needs to be able to aggressively just target out Umi. Oh, uh, you're going to have to be able to kill him first. It seems that Umi has been doing a pretty good job at being able to kite back. Same with Eric. Not really having too much out of LGD to stick on top of either target for Kramer to be able to get that damage sense. Colt is the one who dives into the back line, and even he struggles to kill the targets. Yeah, just very difficult for them right now. We are seeing LGD coming up with uh, some of their core items, a more defensive build from Thresh, just making sure that he's not going to get crowd controlled too much by the Lilting Lullaby. Um, we already see the uh, Mikhails coming out from Chance. But that's not really what they need right now. I feel like they need a lot of burst damage. We are going to have to see Chance actually land a Miracle Hook, most likely onto Ooming, to catch him out and just find the kill that way. Or else, OMG right now, with the much more superior front to back, they have a perfect counter to the damage type from LGD. I want to see how much armor Scion has at this point. He has to be close to 300 at this point. Yeah, probably. I think that's one thing that we didn't really talk about it. While it's a difficult composition to kill, you see how long these fights draw out where LGD aren't killed off immediately. They don't really have the damage either. And you've already been talking about that. It's going to be some time before Kramer is able to melt through new. True. It's just very difficult out of this point. It almost seems like LGD need to play for some sort of a pick comp at this point. Uh, they have to, They can't take front to back. They have to find some access into the back line 
And at this point, this late into the game, side lane split push also isn't an option. We are going to see OMG just pick up this next break. There's going to be no contest whatsoever. LGD know about this as well. And they're saying, it's a clown soul. It doesn't really matter. We can sort of live with that one. Uh, but the next Baron is going to be massive. And it's coming up in less than two minutes. I almost feel like LGD would much prefer to try to fight over an Elder Dragon anyway. So having mm. that dragon gone without a fight is going to be fine for them. They're waiting it out. They're still working on... Whoa, okay. This is interesting. Kramer did not opt for the Infinity oh. Edge like we thought. It's the Bloodthirster, possibly again to stay alive longer in these fights. That's really interesting to see. Huh. I, I wonder how that one actually works out for him. He's... I think it He's has gonna to try do and with survive the through the damage. Right, that's it. I think it's yeah. all about being able to outlast and out survive OMG, who do have far more burst. This is something we talked about before. Their composition needs to be able to kill LGD fast enough. And if it can't succeed in that, LGD have a composition built around surviving and outlasting. Like, I I'm trying to think of the scenarios where Bloodthirst is actually better than Infinity Edge here. And uh, my idea is if he goes into the back line, it still feels like he gets focused out pretty pretty heavily. So the, the best situation for this Bloodthirster is if this team fight somehow is sectioned off into different sections and he finds himself 1v1 versus Umi. He gets a kill onto Umi and he's able to then continue the carry versus carry fight onto Eric. It, it has to be some sort of that scenario where Bloodthirster it does work out better. Um, the the scenario I'm thinking about is basically 1v1 carries. If you have Bloodthirster against a carry that doesn't have sustain, you automatically win it out. So that's kind of the win situation that you're going for. It means that if Quay and Uniboy can break apart OMG's formation and find Ooming in one of these corners, then maybe they have a chance. Oh, but gets the Onslaught of Shadows out of Quay trying to run back to the team. You have the Dream Dust on the chance, but not onto Kramer. So they don't want to pull the trigger on that Lilting Lullaby just yet. But OMG still do want the fight. Keep in mind that Ooming is not here just yet. They have Colt into the back line. Trying to see if he can focus onto Eric. Getting a lot of damage with the shield as well. But they're going to lose Uniboy. And that's going to be their survivor. And their sustain gone. Even with Kramer getting a lot of damage. Trying to heal back up. He finally dies in the fight. Could not pull off the miracle they needed to. It's the ace coming through for OMG. And they are here to see if they can take away a miracle from LGD. They don't really have the minion wave or the numbers to take down the base, but it looks like an inhibitor play and potentially going for the uh, Baron. They have full vision here. They can take this one down, come back on the map, still at an advantageous position. So LGD, uh, they this. live to see another day. I don't think they're going to be able to finish just yet, but the Baron fight is going to be massively in advantage to OMG. That's the problem. That's going to be the big name of the game here is now they don't really have a mid lane to be able to play it around and they are losing all that vision once everyone of OMG spawns back up, rotates around to control the Baron pit. We'll take that fight again and it's just OMG realizing that LGD has used their engage. They go right in, they realize they're in a perfect 5v5 position. Eric dodges away from Colt. Colt even gets the uh, Lilting Lullaby tacked on him when he tries to take down Eric. Eric even flies away, and the carries coming in from OMG just survived too long behind that unkillable Scion. And the big thing for me is that Cold had a massive explosive cast again. This time, instead of being onto Kramer, it was onto Uniboy. And I talked about the survivability, the survivability of LGD when they have this Seraphine that can give them the sustainability to be able to fight back against OMG. Without that, they can't outlast long enough. Yeah, the situation for LGD is still super difficult at this point. What I think you're seeing is LGD going with the right play, trying to push out mid, but this also gives OMG an opportunity to just go on engage. They're just waiting for the Tristana right here, and we see the pings from LGD. They want to push mid and give themselves a better angle into river, but that's also exposing themselves to the full-on engage. OMG are happily waiting around here, this ward could be critical. They know that Tristana isn't here, but ah, uh, they're not going for the pick. Ah, uh, no, they're not. I, I was wondering if they were going to attempt it. TP from Ooming was a bit scary now that they see the TP has been used by Tristana, and they know that they're gonna go straight to the Baron with that. 
Yeah, and OMG, this is just such an easy turnaround. Oh, no. They're not even losing like Kramer, HP like when they're going for this one. Oh, the wave in the bottom lane. This this just means no contest. Yep, once I saw that Kramer and Chance had both backed, I saw the minion wave fought. No way that LGD could even mount a defense, and with this Baron buff second time of the game for OMG, they're going to be able to crack more of these turrets and really force the hand of LGD if they want to even go for an Elder Drake play, or if they're going to be able to last long enough for one. You with a very short engage, just uh, saying, I'm going to go for Staring the guaranteed away. inhibitor rather than the full-on play. Now LGD is chasing in full on their heals. We see the Infinity Edge for item from the... Uh, from the Aphelios finally done here, so we will see LG try to make a little bit more plays, and uh, I think all they're waiting for right now is probably just a stopwatch onto um, onto Cult. I do want to see the stopwatch come out because that's actually going to buy a lot more time and keep Ooming and uh, Eric back a lot more than whatever he's trying to build right now. <laughs> Yeah, I'm curious to see what we're going to get from Umi, but here's the Lulting Lullaby onto two members, but not onto the tanks. A lot of damage in the back line on Aki, but they're going to be able to blow up Chance, try to see if Colt can stay alive in the back line, but finally he dies, so the double kill coming in from Eric. He has a killer instinct, he's on top of the carries, it's a triple kill, they're going to wipe the floor, nearly getting the Penta, it's a quadra kill, clean ace out of OMG, and that is them denying the miracle. LGD not going to be able to have that likelihood anymore, OMG pull off the upset they get the spoiler that they wanted to and it's against lgd two to one in game three perfect team fighting coming out from them and omg show that they still have the